Hey guys, today we're going to talk about seven things that I love that you may not know about. In no particular order, let's start with the wedgie. The wedgie is a pick holder that you uh, put on your headstock and it holds two picks. And it's great because it doesn't have any sticky glue, nothing like that. It's pretty cool and you can get it at wedgie.com. Um, it's Wedgie Products, I think. It's wedgieproducts.com, but I'll put the links down below for everything. Wedgieproducts.com, it's a buck ninety-nine. I don't know what shipping is, but I would imagine if you buy enough of them, the shipping disappears or gets pretty rational. Um, but definitely a cool item. Check it out in detail right now. Okay, so let's check this out. Basically, it is super easy. Let's go ahead and take it off. I'm going to do all this one-handed because i got to hold the camera. This is what it looks like. It is rubber. Okay. I wish they would come in colors. It's really interesting that they haven't figured out that maybe they should do a like a blonde colored one, a black, a black one like this, a brown rubber one. Because again, if you put it on your headstock, it would disappear. But maybe, um, you know, maybe they're just good the way they are. So see how this works? It'll go on any kind of string. So it doesn't matter if it's your acoustic guitar, six string uh, in a row, three and three, or th sorry, six tuning keys in a row, three and three acoustic, electric, and then. Here, I'll show you from this side, so you can see. See how this works? They just go, see? They just wedge in there like a wedgie. Interesting name, right? Super, super easy. What's cool is you can actually put it higher up. See, you just kind of twist. See how it works? See how this is, see how it goes down and then twist. So down and then twist. So you can put it on these last two strings. You can just go wherever you want. It works perfectly. Next are ear filters. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know I did actually a video about this, talking about the Fender and the Planet Waves. There are other versions out there. I have not had no bad experiences with any brand. I'm just familiar with the Fender ones and the Planet Waves, uh, and they're less expensive. I think the Planet One's fetching about $15 or $20, and the Fender's fetching about like $10, $15, something like that. Um, and how that works is they are ear filters. So what happens is you can put them in your ears, and they reduce the decibels. So you hear the same, right? You actually can hear uh, what you're doing and it doesn't change so much that the sound of your guitar or the band uh, in the way that's so negative that you feel like your tone is being changed. So it's a nice way to save your ears but not really lose the perfect sound that you're trying to go for. There's no excuse not to have them now. Like I said, unlike earplugs that kind of just can your ears up, these just take down some of the decibels that are harmful and give you more, I guess, longer term of exposed time to the volume. So very cool. Like I said, ear filters, check them out. They're definitely cool. There's no reason not to have them for concerts or, you know what? You can use them for anything. So, you know, and the other thing is with these is always just download for free a decibel meter app on your phone. Um, it's not 100% accurate, but it'll give you an idea of what kind of ranges you're dealing with. So you know what you're doing this. I keep these, you keep these. I keep them, I don't keep them on my keychain. I keep them in my car. So in case wherever I'm at, I can pull them out of my middle console and have them. All right, guys, next product. Now this one's gonna be one of the strangest ones. This is the Stage Ninja. And they've been out for a few years, believe it or not, and they're kind of like a forgotten product. And I definitely can tell that they're really more focused on other industries besides ours right now. What is the Stage Ninja? Well, it's this really clever device. Let's check it out. And it's just a durable, hard, like, I don't know what kind of plastic this is, but it's, I don't know, ABS plastic probably, right? It's just really impact resistant. So how does it work? Well, one side has a coily side that you can unwrap and you would plug this and this gives you about six feet. So if you unwrap this completely, now you have about six feet. You could take that to your amp, whatever you'd like or vice versa, maybe from the floor to your guitar is perfect. This other side has a retractable, see how that works? Where it pulls out the remainder. So you get a total of about 25 feet, 20, 25 feet of cable. And then when you're done, just like the old vacuum cleaners, remember this, mm -hmm. right? Um, now you can pull it back together. Now it looks cumbersome and that's why I like it. In fact, my only critique is if Stage Ninja ever sees this video is you need these in fluorescent green or orange or a bright color. And let me tell you why. This is why this is valuable. One of the things that people don't realize is guitar players are always paying attention to their pedals, to their amp, to their guitars for being stolen. That's a wise choice, but that's cables are what disappears. When you play, I don't care if you play at uh, a bar or at your friend's house or at a church, right? Cables disappear because it's just either people steal them or it's just confusion and people take them on accident. 
Trust me, if you're the only guy walking around with one of these, you put your van sticker on it, your name, you can use silver Sharpie. You basically put your, your stuff on this. If somebody walks away with one of these, you know it's on purpose, go ahead and you're free to tackle them and beat them with it. It actually makes a great weapon to uh, hit them with. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not advocating violence, but hey, if they're trying to walk away with your stuff, maybe they ask for it, I don't know. But the point of this is, they're, uh, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna take this by accident. So, and that's what I said, it would be really nice if they would do multiple colors, but you could actually do it with uh, maybe some um, fluorescent colored uh, duct tape, right? But definitely cool, not unrealistic. Um, I'll check out their link down below. I think this is 25, 30 bucks, which is what a good cable comes. They're using Neutric ends. Um, it may be called Neutric. I never get it right, Neutric. I always tell people, I, you know what, when I grew up, we didn't have the internet to verify what things are pronounced as. So me and my friends called stuff what we all thought, and then it just sticks with you over time. Okay, so anyways, very good. In fact, this one is, I wanna say I bought this in 2007. So, so in fact, I just got another one because a friend of mine gave me one. So, very cool. All right, guys, next product. Four is this guy right here. Now, this is something that's actually cool and sad. This is the crate power block. It comes just like you see it. it. Comes in this cool bag that's very durable. You pull it out and what do you have? You have a 150 watt amplifier. I'm not kidding. This is a mono bridge, push the button. You get 150 watts of pure power. Or if you split it, you can run your effects processor in stereo into it and get 75 watts per channel, each channel. Now, you can also use it as a keyboard amp. So if you're on stage and you need a keyboard amp, you plug your keyboard in this output, it's clean power. You could also run it as a bass amplifier or a guitar amplifier. It has a gain control that is really cool. It has a very British Marshall sound. We'll give a sound sound in a second. It has a line out with XLR which is cool right there with actually a level control. And what they did that's really nice is, do you see how they didn't, it looks like the knob's missing? It's not, they just, you know, you can use your fingertip or a pick or just turn it if you have, you know, right, you just want to. And that way you set it the way you want and you don't have to worry about breaking it off, worrying about any of that stuff. You could also use it as, if you're in between songs or sets, I should say sets, you can run your MP3 player into it through uh, RCA jacks and, uh, it's so funny, this came out in 2006 or seven, and it's got CD input. I think that dates it right there, right? <laughs> CD input, you could put your CD disc man into this. So anyways, hey, you know what? I bet you somewhere out there has got one and is probably thinking, yeah, I will. Um, and of course, it has an effects loop, right? Which is, I mean, how do you beat that? And that's what's the interesting part. It's so cool that the input jack is right here. It has a headphone jack right there, but when you do the input jack, if you need stereo inputs, you just put them in through the effects loop. So you lose your effects loop if you need true stereo, but the odds are you're probably running a processor or a keyboard. And like I said, it's just pure power. So it is listed as a guitar amplifier, but they did market it back in the day as being universal. It's very cool. They fluctuate in price like crazy. Crazy. I've seen them recently go for as low as $75 and as high as $250. Um, it's really pay what you want. Um, these, just so you know, brand new. These were $150. And at the end of the demise of Crate, um, stores were dumping them as low as $65 is what I saw the lowest, but they were averaging about $75 to $100. Um, I'm sure you guys have comments. You can put them in there that how you got them for, you know, 50 bucks or free with some stuff you bought at a guitar store. Um, Cause like I said, at the end, they were really dumping these things. It's a really cool product. It's worth checking out. Let's actually listen to it right now. And what's nice about it is you can actually use your volume control to clean up. So in dirty mode. Or you can just run the gain all the way back and definitely get some kind of warm kind of, let's turn it up just a hair. And let's go ahead. Very clean, lots of clean power, but like I said, if you needed to, you can use a little gain on it. Another cool feature about it, I should point out is, is that it has the ability to do um, 
both European and American voltages. So in other words, if you plug it into the wall outlets, uh, you have to buy the adapter, of course, um, you know, the adapter for your plug, but the uh, internal power supply uh, is switching enough and it will switch over to whichever one you need. So cool feature for sure. Okay, so number five. This is just a basic D'Addario string winder, as you can see, but it has a couple cool features. One, it has a pen puller right there, right there, and these are your string cutters. And it's not just this. I think you should get this and basically the guitar tool, which is a tool that has uh, a filler gauge, a um, two screwdrivers, flathead screwdriver, pretty much every kind of Allen wrench you can think of. It's called the Gatool. And it's really cool. But basically with this and this, you put this in your gig bag or case. You have a couple packs of strings and you can do pretty much anything wherever you are. There's no excuse to drive down to the music store or go back to wherever you were uh, if you're at a gig. Basically the Gatool, the string winder, and some strings. Number six. Okay, it's the Korg Pitch Clip Tuner. Now, before you him or ha, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, uh, but I use the Snark or I use the, um, the TC Electronics or what have you. There's a reason why I like this one particularly. I actually use the Diodario one probably just as much, if not more. And I think I have all of them. If you look through all the clip-on tuners, I'm pretty sure if you look around the room, I have them all. Um, and I like them all, and they're all pretty accurate. I've actually done a test where I want to see how accurate they were compared to each other, and they were so close that it was just boring. There was no way to do a video about it because they all were pretty accurate. There's a reason why I use the pitch clip. I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay, so when I found the pitch clip by Korg, it was because the rep came in the shop and said, check out our new clip-on tuner. And my partner said, no thanks, we sell like a billion snarks a year. So we don't want this. He said, yeah, but does your snark do this? Or does it do this? As you can see, pretty durable and works perfectly fine as you, right? Now, I know what you're thinking. There's a lot of tuners that you think are really good, like maybe the TC one, and they are, they're very good. And it's not that I'm saying that you can drop this and it won't crack the screen or break the neck. That is pretty important. What it does though, as I've noticed, is that this is one of the few that you can drop a few times, maybe a half a dozen times, and it still be as accurate as it was at first. What I've noticed with most of these clip-on tuners is as they get dropped, eventually over time, the sensor inside them or something cracks, breaks, I don't know what happens, but they become less accurate. So if you have one and you're having trouble detecting certain notes on your guitar, or you feel like it doesn't work like it did, it's probably because it's been dropped. So something to be aware of. Now last is not a new product, but, and it's actually one I've done a video. You can actually watch my hand-free slide video where I actually use the same one. And I show you how to use it like in a hands-free kind of thing. But what I like about it is it's a fender slide made out of aluminum, unless you're from the other side of the pond and it's aluminum. But what's nice about it is it's as light as the Pyrex glass slides, but it's way more durable. In fact, even the brass slides can be dented easily. So if you drop a brass slide, you can scratch it and that will change the way it is. Um, this one, you can scratch it and dent it, but not as easily. But what I like about it is it's a one size fits most hands. And... Now, what's nice is when you do a song, or maybe something quick and you only got one gig, you can just go ahead and put it on your tuning key, like that. It'll fit over almost every kind of tuning key there is, and it won't fall off, and it'll get you through the song. It was so light that it won't damage your tuning key or your neck, which is an important thing. And also, if you have a bag of like, let's say cables on the side of the stage, you can toss it and not worry about it shattering or denting uh, like the brass and the glass ones. So it's a really cool slide, that's for sure. All right, guys, if you haven't subscribed and you like to, go ahead and hit the subscription button down below. It lets me know that you're interested in more videos and motivates me to make them. If you like the videos, hit like, and if you dislike the videos, hit dislike. Leave comments. Tell me your experiences. Are, do you have you tried these products? Have these, are you have the same experience I have? You know, right? I like to see what, what other musicians out there have seen or done, or is there something out there we're all missing too? Like I said, uh, put it in the comments below. And as always, I want to thank you for your time and know your gear.